Hello, welcome to World of Warships for our Saturday edition video where we're going to be doing an upgrade and commander build video of the tier 9 British Tech Tree uh, Battleship HMS Lion. So we're going to be looking at the modules, uh, upgrades, the armor, the commander, and the consumables. So let's just hop right into it, shall we? So first off, we need to discuss what type of battleship is HMS Lion. Is she a brawler? Is she a mid-range battleship? Or is she this long-range um, accurate uh, firing battleship? Um, and honestly, my opinion is is that the HMS Lion is a mid-range battleship. She doesn't perform the long-range role very well because her guns just lack the accuracy to be meaningful at long range. Um, yet she doesn't do well at close range because you know she doesn't have any torpedoes, doesn't have any hydroacoustic search. Um, you can find that you'll be somewhat squishy or your guns get knocked out easily. Um, so she just doesn't have that um, ability to do the close range well. So she, she really works in that mid range, let's say 15, 12 kilometer uh, zone quite well. Um, and you can see me kind of illustrating that in yesterday's video, which will be tagged at the end of this clip. So with that aside, let's go ahead and look at the armor. Uh, so when we're looking at the armor, uh, we have a lot of 32 millimeter um, over the lion. Um, it's the bow stern plating, it's the deck plating. Um, so it's pretty standard in terms of that, uh, which means that you know you can be caught out and taking a lot of um, HE pins uh, spam. Uh, you don't have this enormous superstructure. It's kind of broken up into two parts. So that's nice. Um, that's not a, a honking superstructure, something like, you know, Georgia, uh, as an example. Uh, but one of the things I wanted to talk about before we look at the Citadel is talk about the guns. Because um, these guns, if you notice, they are flat-faced. Um, they don't have an angle uh, on them. Uh, usually when your frontal turrets have, like, an angle, which you'll see in a lot of battleships, um, if someone's trying to knock out your guns, uh, oftentimes they'll just ricochet uh, upward and harmlessly deflect away. But because these turrets are very flat faced, uh, it means that they're going to catch the shell more um, and do uh, enough damage to possibly knock out your turrets. Um, and so I've had that happen to me several times in playing Lion so far. Um, just with the cruisers, heavy cruisers with uh, large or calibers and even battleships. So you see the frontal plating is 381. On the side, it's 254, which goes to 178. So the back half of the turret is the weakest. Um, and then, of course, on the very, again, on the back uh, around here as well. On the top, it's 152, so that's even weaker. And on the bottom here, it's a 340. Um, so your weakest spot, of course, is on the top of your turrets and then on the back. Um, so you just have to be mindful. I mean, even when you look at this way, I mean, it's got a little bit of a slope angle to it, but not very much. So you just really have to be mindful of knowing that from time to time, uh, you're turrets can indeed get knocked out. Now let's go ahead and start looking more towards the Citadel. So we have 381 that actually covers majority um, besides the upper 32 millimeter armor belt uh, down into the torpedo protection 2 and 60 millimeter and then side plating down here uh, is just uh, 38. Um, so I think the deep water torpedoes will actually hit this low enough if I'm not mistaken. But we take some things away to reveal uh, more of the Citadel area. And you can see this is an above water Citadel. Um, comes up just a little bit um, and naturally stretching from the forward most turrets to the rear most turrets. Um, so that's something that you have to be mindful of. You don't want to, you have good ar uh, belt armor, but you have to be mindful of not showing too much side. You want to keep an angle, otherwise you will be Citadeled um, in playing. Um, when we look more at these different decks, you know, it's just 32 uh, and then another 32. So you can even get, um, like I think, something like AP dive bombers uh, will bust through in hitting your Citadel as well, since it kind of has this top hat. One of the things we also have to discuss, if uh, as happened in the video yesterday, um, is if you put the stern armor back on, it's just 32 millimeter. And most battleships have a curved stern at the very end. Um, but with these British battleships, you have a flat booty. Um, so if you notice um, in yesterday's video, um, the tier 9 French heavy cruiser, the Brest, uh, actually punched through our stern armor when we were cutting away, uh, and the shell went right into our back of our citadel. So you can get citadeled uh, from the rear 
um, if you're not careful because of this flat surface. So you just have to be mindful of that um, when you're playing this ship. Um, and players who are mindful enough can take advantage of that if they find you kiting away and they have a large enough caliber. Now in terms of the upgrades, um, I talked a little bit more about this in yesterday's video. Uh, but the first thing you're going to want to do, I would recommend, is upgrading the hull. Because as a tier 9 battleship, having 58,600 health pool is really low. Um, and even when you get up to 67,900, uh, that's still pretty low. Uh, if I throw on some other tier 9 battleships, uh, just for us to just briefly look at as a comparison. Um, here you can see with the Minnesota, uh, 76,300. Uh, the Iowa... 79,000, FDG, 84,300, the Zumo, 78,900, and Prince Ruprecht won't have as much because she's more of like a, a battle cruiser, but she has 63,900. So um, in terms of just a standard tier nine battleship, the hit point pull that you have here uh, on the Lion is pretty low. Uh, so you wanna research this first um, and picking it up. Uh, I think your AA rating also goes up further. Yeah, your A defense, and then you get a little bit uh, better maneuverability. Um, then I'd recommend probably going for the guns, upgrading them from the 406s to the 409s. Uh, the difference being is that your HE shell damage and your AP shell damage is going to go up. You can see, not by a whole lot, but a little bit more. And then also with the HE shells, uh, your chances of causing a fire are 48% versus the 406s have a 46%. Um, uh, so we can actually buff this up uh, 49. And then if we had an Indian X-ray, we have 50% chance of your shells causing a fire. Um, so that's actually quite nice. Then I'd recommend go for the gunfire control system. Get your main battery firing range up to 21.1 from 19.2. Then go for your propulsion, which is gonna take you from 28 knots to 29.5 knots. So throw a mic flag on there, you're going to be busting over 30 knots at 31 knots top speed. And in terms of the upgrades, I have indeed taken the main armaments modification. This reduces the risk of the main battery becoming incapacitated, improves our main battery survivability by plus 50%, and main battery repair time is reduced by negative 20%. Um, I can't stress probably taking this one enough, just because of how many times I've had the well, I've had three or four times the main guns knocked out of line while grinding it uh, for the Conqueror. Uh, so I do recommend uh, mounting this. Uh, for the second slot, I recommend taking damage control system modification one. It reduces your risk of catching fire by negative five. Risk of flooding, negative three percent. Um, I've not had my engine or steering gears knocked out thus far with Lion. Um, usually it's a little harder to knock them out on the battleships. Um, but just being able to reduce the fire and flooding chance is uh, decent and good to do in my opinion. Um, now let's talk about the uh, third slot. So you see I have the aiming systems modification one. The main reason I take this is that it reduces uh, your horizontal and your maximum vertical dispersion. So uh, we're getting tighter dispersion horizontally and vertically. Um, they did, Wargaming did buff the Sigma, and Sigma is just a chance of the shells landing in the center of like wherever you're aiming. Um, they did buff the Sigma from 1.8 to 1.85. So they got a tiny step up, um, which helped. Um, but it, to me, it's still, you're gonna be getting car washes uh, when you're firing, especially at a range. Um, you can even be firing at a target 14 kilometers away and maybe one of your nine shells hits. So it's a little frustrating. So I do recommend trying to improve uh, your main battery shell dispersion. You also get a slight buff to your secondaries, plus five, and then dispersion, uh, negative five. Um, though the secondaries aren't really nothing to write home about. They have a 7.3 kilometer range and reload time of 6.7%, but of course, they might come in handy if a destroyer is rushing you. Um, the other ones you could take would be something like the main battery modification two. This improves your main battery traverse speed. Um, so right now our main battery traverse speed is 41.4 seconds. Um, I still value the dispersion. The only way I can see the main battery modification 2 being more helpful is that you have poor uh, rear firing angles and somewhat forward firing angles. 
So being able to maybe get your turrets turned quickly to fire and then angle more away could be beneficial. So that would be the second option I'd recommend taking. For the fourth slot, I recommend taking the damage control system modification two. Fire extinguishing time, negative 15%. Flooding recovery time, negative 15%. So this is gonna just help your health overall um, in improving your survivability. For the fifth slot, I recommend taking the concealment system modification one. This reduces your ship's detectability range by negative 10%, squadron detectability range, negative 10%, and dispersion of shells fired by enemies attacking your ship, plus 5%. So um, I think I have to look real quick. No, that's the last thing I'm working on right now. Um, and I thought that was the case in yesterday's video. So right now our concealment is 13.4, um, but just to highlight concealment, um, because I took the emergency repair expert and fire prevention first, just for Lion, um, we can get our concealment down to 12 kilometers. So that's actually really, really good. And to me, that would help your overall experience um, in playing the line. Just because uh, you can disengage, go dark uh, more sooner than being a detectable range of 13.4 uh, by C. So um, do build into concealment. Um, it is going to help you a lot in playing the lion um, and yet making you more stronger ship, especially if you catch a cruiser out uh, who um, catches you. You're 12 kilometers away from him. You have AP with that short uh, fuse AP. Uh, you can wreck cruisers very easily if they give you enough broadside. Uh, six slots. I have gone for the main battery modification three. Main battery reload time, negative 12%. Main battery traverse speed, negative 13%. So you can see our reload time is 25.5 uh, seconds. So even though we don't have the greatest accuracy in the world in comparison to something like the Iowa, um, we do have a pretty good reload time uh, to continue, you know, that HE spamming role, then maybe switching to the AP when you have broadsiding targets um, like a cruiser or battleship if need be. Um, so the reload time is actually rather nice, in my opinion, to build into. Uh, I don't recommend building into range just because you have spotter plane already um, and you already have with the, the additional buff Wargaming did for this um, ship recently was uh, extend the main battery firing range um so 21.1 is plenty enough to work with unless you have you know a battleship running away like in yesterday's video the turpits and we just popped the spotting aircraft uh and we're slinging uh he at him um yeah i think we've talked a little bit already about you know these he shells we talked about the AP slightly, that they do have the short fuse um, AP, so definitely take advantage of that when you're dealing with cruisers. You have a better chance of them, your shells, AP shells not uh, over, um, match over penetrating um, because of them being short fused. And then you have your depth charge airstrike, uh, maximum bomb damage 4,200, and you have two bombs in the payload, so uh, and a reload time of 30 seconds, so pretty standard. In terms of the consumables, we have the damage control party. Uh, consumable action time, 16.5 seconds. Reload time, 80 seconds. Um, and then we have the specialized repair teams um, here on uh, the Lion. And then if we throw the India Delta combat signal, we're going to see that number jumps up to 1,629 from being at 1,358. Uh, so you want to run India Delta. You know, it could give you the ability to heal back even more damage. Um, and having the specialized repair teams uh, means that you're going to be healing a lot more damage back and you're going to get a lot of more value out of these heals. Um, so if, you know, to again, to compare something like the Iowa. Uh, Iowa has a standard repair party. So C plus 625 uh, in comparison uh, to Lion with that plus 1,629. So you can see the difference there already. Um, so you can be close to death and then heal your ship all the way back past um, half health because um, you can heal 75% back of pin damage. Uh, so it's really good to have and um, helps to make the Lion uh, a better ship to play. Otherwise, she'd be a bit lacking if she had the standard repair party, in my opinion. So Wargaming did right, in my opinion. Then you have spotting aircraft and fighter, but um, I typically just run spotting aircraft. Um, try to help me more accurately land salvos at range when enemy ships are running away. You do have a fighter, but it's never going to stop the first um, drop by enemy CV. Um, it's really hard to ever stop a first drop by enemy CV. And you might not always see 
um, an enemy carrier, um, but your fighters come off cooldown much more quickly than the spotting aircraft, and your fighters do have the ability to spot maybe some enemy ships behind an island that's near you, like a destroyer, for example, um, just like the spotting aircraft uh, would pick up, and having that flying radius around your ship. Uh, for example, what would be the combat signals I would run? Honestly, I'd do something like this. So, just give you an example. Let's go ahead and look at the commander. So, we have a seasoned commander. Uh, we have Jack Dunkirk. Um, he has two enhanced skills, uh, one of which is the consumable specialist. Um, so it's basically a greater cooldown time on your consumables, but you can see here it's only helping our spotting aircraft, so not really uh, worth taking. But then we have Grease the Gears, plus 25% rather than plus 20%. So um, it's kind of a trade-off when you take the uh, this modification, aiming systems modification, in slot 3 since you're not taking the main battery modification too. Um, so in my opinion, it helps. Um, and so I purposely ran him on uh, this line, on my battleship line for that reason. Um, as I take him up, and I'm going to be placing him on Conquer um, pretty soon. Uh, so if my memory serves correctly, you can just pick him up from the armory. Uh, so let me just show you that real quick in case uh, you're curious. I can tell you whether I got him for the 35,000 coal or if he was 1,500 doubloons. Uh, so let's scroll down here. Well, my mistake. Uh, we have his counterpart, Bert Dunkirk. Um, yeah, I don't remember where I picked up Jack Dunkirk from. Maybe he was one of the commanders that you actually pick up from the operations when you five star it. Um, that might be the case. Um, so, but you can get an identical Bert Dunkirk. Um, has the same things, um, just different skill for. Um, yeah, destroyer cruiser specialist enhancement so um so this is the consumable specialist that we have that's active on the battleship we have a different enhanced skill for a destroyer cruiser so back to the commander um how would i utilize my first 10 points um i would first go for the well Honestly, now that I've played line, I'd probably actually change this. Um, I'd probably switch the gun feeder over to preventive maintenance to help reduce the risk of the main turrets and um, steering gears and engine becoming capacitated, um, mainly for the um, risk, uh, reducing the risk of our main turrets being capacitated because it's happened several times since I've played the ship already. Um, but um, once you get to line and then you get to conquer, uh, your AP shells uh, do rather well. Um, so I'll, this was kind of the thinking I had in mind in terms of long term because you don't want to underestimate the, I, the AP from Lion, um, especially Conqueror, um, and not only firing HE constantly, though they do a good job firing HE constantly. Um, so I took Gun Feeder in mind that I might be switching between shell types. So it's a negative 40% uh, switching uh, time uh, here. Then I go for the Grease the Gears, so with Jack Dunkirk, we're getting the plus 25%. For six-pointer, uh, Adrenaline Rush, because as you lose some health, your load time is going to start dropping down to, let's say, 25 seconds, 24.5 seconds, 24 seconds. Um, so having a really strong reload time tied with Adrenaline Rush, in my opinion, works quite well. Um, the next skill I think I did take, I actually took the Emergency Repair Expert first. Because otherwise, you only have three specialized repair teams. And I wanted to have four. Uh, so I picked up Emergency Repair Expert first. Um, you also get to increase the action time of the damage control party. Uh, so that's why it's a little bit longer when we were looking at it. So I can actually hop back into it just to show you. 16.5 um, seconds. Um, otherwise, this would be slightly uh, lower. Though I can't think off the top of my head would be, oh yeah, it'd been 15 seconds. So now we have 16.5 seconds, and that reload time being 76 seconds because now we've mounted uh, the November Foxtrot combat signal. Then for 14 points, honestly, because of so much HE spam at the tier 9, tier 10, and uh, <laughs> super ships, I'd recommend taking Fire Prevention Expert. It reduces your risk of catching fire by negative 10%. And the maximum number of fires you can have aboard your ship is negative one. So if you're a newer player and not sure what that's about, uh, 
Without fire prevention, you can have four fires on your ship, the bow, stern, and two on the superstructure. Uh, what fire prevention does, on top of that negative 10%, uh, reducing the chances of catching on fire, is it instead of only having, having two fires on your superstructure, you only have one. And most HE spammers are aiming for the center of your ship, uh, so then you're eating less damage, which means you're more of a tanky, you increase your survivability. Uh, so I really do recommend picking up uh, the fire prevention for 14 point. And then for uh, an 18 point, which I'm working towards now, I'm hoping to get soon, uh, go ahead and pick up the concealment expert. Um, now we get our ship's range by sea, 12 kilometers versus the 13.4. And then uh, by air, it drops down to 8.5 rather than being 9.5. So 18 point commander, I recommend going that route. And then uh, with your last three points, 21 point commander, I'd recommend picking up the basics of survivability. Your mod to restoration time, negative 15%, and then your fire and flooding recovering time is negative 15%. So it means you're not burning and you're not flooding for as long. So that means you're just overall a much more tankier tier nine battleship, even though you don't have the best, uh, you have a pretty poor health pool um, in comparison to other tier nine battleships. Um, so this is what I'd recommend. I did have someone recently ask me about the Furious skill. Um, it's a can be activated, improves your ship's characteristics for each uh, active fire on board your ship. Your main battery reload time, negative 5%, dispersion of shells fired by enemies attacking your ship, plus 5%. So um, I know because you get the specialized repair teams, uh, for some it doesn't uh, bother them as much. It's a bit more of a meme build if uh, you will. Um, so you could take Furious, but then what you're going to do is you're going to want to drop Fire Prevention, pick up Concealment Expert, and then go for Basic Survivability. Um, because um, with reducing the number, you don't want Fire Prevention, right? If you want to use this skill, you want Fires. Um, and basically, you'd be guaranteeing two Fires in your superstructure a lot. Um, so then two Fires would mean your main battery reload time would drop by negative 10%, and then Dispersion plus 10% um, by enemies attacking your ship. Uh, so that means you'd be knocking this reload time down um, over two seconds, over 2.5 seconds. Um, so that means 23 seconds roughly in taking Furious. So if you want to, you can, but I don't necessarily recommend it because to me, um, this is just uh, a really good traditional overall build. Um, if you want to try it out, Go on the public test server if you have an account there and try out this build because it doesn't cost anything uh, to redistribute your skills. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to recommend this. But I recommend anything else. Um, you probably could get use out of your brisk. Um, so maybe if you didn't take um, grease the gears, uh, let's say you took um, main body modification two. Um, versus the aiming systems, then that's a decent enough trade-off where you could give up uh, Grease the Gears and pick up Brisk, because um, Brisk uh, increases your ship speed by plus 10%. Uh, so your maneuverability, you know, then you still have this, of course, uh, would be, when you're not detected, uh, would be plus 10%, so that would be over 34 knots. Uh, so not too shabby if you're trying to reposition around Granted that there's not a carrier, there's not a destroyer or a submarine detecting you. So um, it's really up to you. Um, and again, you could test that on the public test server if you wanted to as well. Or if you have enough doubloons and it doesn't bother you uh, to redistribute uh, your cost, then you could go for that as well. So let's go ahead and wrap this video up for a close. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. Let me know what you're running on your line. And if you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe if you do want to see more. If you haven't subscribed, thanks so much. I really appreciate it, and we'll catch you next time. Take care.